Now, if you do a little stargazing tonight, you may spot a particularly bright sight. No, it's not the star of Bethlehem, just in time for Christmas. It is, in fact, two planets coming as close together in their separate or orbits as they have in 400 years. Well, to tell us more about that, I'm joined by Clyde Foster, director of the Shallow Sky Section from the Astronomical Society of South Africa. Clyde, thank you very much for joining us this evening. Just tell us about this event. Hi, Sally, um, and welcome to your viewers. Yes, uh, an incredibly special event as we as we close out this uh, this very difficult year, specifically for those of us that have been following the planets uh, through the year. And just to explain what is happening, um, over the last number of months, the, the two largest planets in the solar system, Jupiter and Saturn, in their o orbits have been slowly moving together. And um, this evening, they are at their, their closest point. Now, this is what we call the, the Great Conjunction. And because of the orbits of uh, Jupiter and Saturn, this occurs on the average approximately 20 years, every 20 years. But typically, the planets, because of the inclination of the, the orbits around the sun, the, the, the orbits are, are slightly tilted differently they would typically come within about one degree of each other, which is which is beautiful to see. But this is a very special um, occasion for, for the Grand Conjunction in that they are, this evening, approaching to within one-tenth of a degree, which is incredibly close. In fact, in a, a fairly high-powered telescope, um, you're able to get both of the planets in, in the same field of view, which is which is stunning. We've been, been monitoring it over the last couple of nights and getting some beautiful views of the two planets and their moons as they've, they've moved together. Now, the, one of the reasons why this is so special is that although they, they come together every 20 years, the last time they were this close together um, at conjunction was, as you quite rightly indicated, uh, approximately 400 years ago. That's, that's um, in 1626. And um, that was just a handful of years after Galileo first, first had his telescope, <laughs> um, just to put that in context. But um, that specific grand conjunction was that the planets were very close together, <clears throat> or very close to the sun at that time, and they were basically un unobservable. The previous time when they were this close and could be seen by people on Earth uh, dates back to uh, the year 1226. So we're going back 800 years. And of course, there was no telescopes in those days. So we, we are getting a unique view mm. of these planets in the same field of view um, for the first time. And um, it, so it, it's become an uh, extremely exciting event. Um, obviously, quite a bit of media hype around it. Um, it not, is the, not a, I, I wanted to just jump in there because a, a couple of people have sort of seen it as quite a Christmassy sight. We know, of course, that um, Jesus was actually born, I think, sometime in March. So this could never on any level have been interpreted as the star of Bethlehem. Am I right? Uh, there's been various theories, um, Sally, regarding the, the years and um, possible conjunctions of the planets um, that, that could be associated with that. Um, quite frankly, for me, uh, I think we need whatever positives we can at this stage of the year <laughs> after what, what we've had. And um, if people want to associate this with um, what the, the Christmas star or the star of Bethlehem would have looked like, um, I, I believe that's a positive thing. <laughs> Knock yourselves out. So science can take a little bit of a backseat if we want to call the grand conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn the, the Christmas star. Tell me something, if I want to see it tonight, uh, it, you know, is it, how visible is it in our southern skies? How do we look for it? How spectacular will it be? Um, and how long is it going to be visible for? Is it just tonight? Is it just for a small portion of this evening? Tell us all about seeing it today, to, to, tonight uh -huh. rather. Right. The, the planets have been moving together now for, as I say, the last couple of months and the, the last few evenings we've been getting beautiful views. Now, basically what people need to do, and, and I had uh, my two little grandchildren, um, Liam and Addie, out in the observatory last night with binoculars and they were getting all excited. <laughs> and basically, um, from about seven o'clock this evening, as the, the sky darkens, and, and I can tell you, I'm, I'm looking straight out my window and I'm a little bit depressed with the cloud that I'm seeing out there. 
So if, if you've got clear skies, make the most of it. Uh, get your family out uh, with binoculars. If you've got a little telescope, great. But basically what you're looking for is to look towards the west where the sun is set and the sky will be a little bit brighter than the rest of the, the sky and that will obviously darken. And then as it darkens, you'll see a very bright star um, appearing. And if you've got eyesight like mine, it'll, it'll appear as a single star. If you've got better eyesight, you'll probably see both the planets. But they are very, very close together. And you'll separate them with, uh, with binoculars or a, a, a small telescope. So this evening from about 7 o'clock onwards through to about 8, 8.15, of course, what's happening is that they're dropping very quickly um, to, towards the horizon. So the best is to catch them as soon as the sky is, is, is darkening. And if it's cloudy tonight, will we still be able to see them tomorrow and for a few nights afterwards? Absolutely. Yes, they'll obviously start moving apart again and also getting lower um, in the sky. So it will become more difficult. But if you go online, there's a number of um, live streaming events. Um, at, um, there's, there's one from Boyden Observatory in, in Bloemfontein, if you do a search online. Um, there's another one, uh, my friend Corey Schmitzen in Johannesburg also is doing live streaming tonight if it's clear. Um, but yes, you, this is not a single night event, although tonight is where the two planets are the closest. Well, I'm planning a little stargazing when I leave the studio at 8 o'clock. Thank you very much for telling us all about it. That was Clyde Foster, director of the Shallow Sky section from the Astronomical Society of South Africa. If you want to see that grand conjunction of uh, Jupiter and Saturn, I think it is, yes, um, you can see it tonight after 7 o'clock, hopefully, if the skies are clear. And you must look west to where the sun set.